it's evening and Blackpool Pleasure Beach is winding down after another busy day. But over at the Ice Arena, things are hotting up. With just three days to go before the new show opens, there's a technical run-through. And Amanda Thompson, the producer and the owner's daughter, is far from happy. I'm not like that. Positions, everybody. Yeah. It's stressful when you work on lights, costumes, and 26 performers, all thinking they're going the right way when they're going the wrong way, and it's just pulling the whole thing together in the last week. I don't bully them. They just get tired and stressed, and I haven't had anyone storming off the ice in floods of tears, but I have two days to go. <laughs> Not everyone comes to the Pleasure Beach for a good time. Susanna has just arrived from Portugal, but this is the last place in the world she wants to be. She's been persuaded to come here by a Portuguese game show that pays people serious money to overcome their worst fears. Susanna is terrified of heights. The host of the show is George. He's Portugal's Jeremy Beadle. She's the lady. Apparently, Susanna's mother volunteered her. She thinks it will help Susanna to overcome her phobia. She's 20 years old. She's afraid of uh, almost everything. It's going to be good. <laughs> we'll see. George's first tactic is to lull her into a false sense of security. Ai, ai. Ai, ai. In fact, what George really wants to do is to get her on the big one, the tallest roller coaster in the world. He'll try to entice her on board with fistfuls of Portuguese escudos. Another woman under pressure is Joanne Conway. She's one of the stars of the ice show and is having a last-minute crash course on how to light herself up with fibre optics. Oops. The main thing you need to do is, once you've got it on, is check is it. just check, or even before the show starts, even better, is just check mm. that you, you're going to light up, because yeah, that's I mean, pretty quick... disastrous if, it, yeah. if nothing happens, because everybody gets this really big build-up and then no lights come on. <laughs> Although six times British champion with two Olympic appearances to her credit, Joanne's rink record is a little shaky. My nickname is Frosty Bun because I used to fall over quite a lot, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and it's kind of stuck with me all the way through and I even call myself it now if my friends call and say, hi, it's Frost there, you know, and it, it just stays with me and I, I don't mind it. The British champion, Joanne Conway. The last time that I actually skated in front of an audience was at the Olympics. Unfortunately, it's happened again. And that's two. Well, that was the double uh, axle as well. In 92, I was doing a double axle and landed and snapped my Achilles tendon. I've not jumped since I came here. I've never done a double axle since then. So it's a big thing for me, again. Um, but I've been doing them and Amanda's been really encouraging to me during rehearsals to, you know, keep going and keep trying it. <laughs> Susanna has finally cottoned on to George's little game. Just wait a few moments, please, if you don't mind. Operations manager Keith Allen holds up the ride so that George can bribe Susanna into the front carriage. Fill the train up, but we'll that's to be quick. So, we have to sit down at the front. No. So, we have to sit down at the front. The decision is yours. The decision is yours. We're all here. 
Everybody listen and everybody concentrate. Right. After a gruelling rehearsal, it's time for a few home truths from Amanda and her choreographer. We started off all right, didn't we? Yes, Act 1 was better than it was. Act 2 was a total disaster. It just fell apart. And we might as well not have rehearsed at all for that. We keep seeing the same mistakes. Mm. When we're going back and doing those three turns, of where am I supposed to be, me and Eagle? We're stuck out on a limb. Where you were set to be, because we had it right, didn't we, yesterday? But we weren't set to be anywhere. No, going darling, backwards. everybody is set to be somewhere. Well, I wasn't. No, but you line up well, with um, Natalia we and are Alex. Going this it. is probably the worst set of rehearsals I've ever had to go through. People are tired now and they're forgetting what we've changed, and I think it's a bit panic stations everywhere, really, at the moment. Um, this week is just. Not a good one. Susanna is still not playing ball, and Keith's getting worried. A grounded roller coaster is bad for business. I've got to go. I can't keep it. Don't forget. I have to go. I have to go. Yes or no? Let's go. We have to go. Let's go. I have to go. People waiting. Yes? Right, I got it. Okay, okay, we go. Well done. Come on, here. Time for a final check of the onboard camera. There to record every shriek and grimace of Susanna's nightmare journey. It's the hot ice photo call, and they're behind schedule. Hockey lights off! Hockey lights off! Someone turn the hockey lights off! Where are the smoke machines? Are they plugged in? Can I have the lights on the stairs, please? Can I have the lights on these stairs? Now, somebody, please listen to me. Lights on these stairs, please, today. If I left it to somebody else, it wouldn't be done exactly how I want it, and it has to be exactly as I want it. And unfortunately, people don't quite understand the word urgency. When I say now, I mean now, because you're keeping 26 people waiting. <laughs> <laughs> While Susanna recovers, the TV crew check the tape. There's a problem. The tape is blank. Not a single frame to entertain the viewers back home. We'll probably have to, going to have to do it again because the camera didn't work. Right, so we now need to go and persuade her to ride it. <laughs> Astonishingly, George has somehow persuaded Susanna to go round one more time. We're all set up here. All we need for you is to tell us when you're ready and then we can do this damn thing and get it over with. <laughs> This time, the camera works. What's the matter, Kibis? What's the matter, Kibis? Got a trick 
it, is it? We wouldn't do that sort of thing. We'd just say, would you like to go on the ride? No, thank you, I'm fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sim, já acabamos. Ah, dá mais. Não, não dá mais. Time is running out. The hot ice show opens tonight. It's Joanne's last chance to practice that double axle. Every night's a big night for Jim Rowland. Known as JR, he's the man in charge. With up to 85,000 customers crammed into the 42-acre site, it's a big responsibility. The pressure at times is tremendous, you can well imagine. A night like tonight's fairly heavy. There's a lot of people about. Um, I'm worried about their safety. I'm worried about my staff's safety. Any minute, we'll get somebody to jump over this fence into that pond. They think it's 16 foot deep, it's 2 foot 3. And we had it not so long ago and he had a broken leg and he couldn't understand it. All that adds to the pressure. And uh, the job like this, if you can't stand the pressure, you better get out. Get out of the kitchen if you can't stand the heat. We shall see what happens. It's been going well in practice, so... The worst thing for me that could possibly go wrong is that I fall in my solo. Um, but I've been doing everything every day, so there's no reason at all why I should fall. Before the show, to sweeten up the local worthies, there's bubbly laid on by Geoffrey Thompson. He's the Pleasure Beach's owner and Amanda's proud father. Ladies and gentlemen, could you take your seats in the arena as the show is about to begin and Amanda will be very annoyed if you're not on time. Irish accent, male. Security supervisor Bert Atherton has just received a call from the Blackpool police. He needs JR to report in urgently. Yeah, hold on, I'll put him on. Jim, I've had PC Humphrey on the phone. Bomb threat. Received it from a phone kiosk on Burlington West. That's near our car park there. Irish accent, 50 years old. Uh, no code, the words were, exact words, you have three quarters of an hour to clear Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have planted a bomb. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The greatest show on earth is about to begin. Yeah. All your people out there? All out. Mm -hmm. um, get a couple up on the overpass. Yeah. Till I pass. We've got 45 minutes. So get two of yours up on the overpass station there. Take seven patrol eight, please. And leave them there, just in case. What's the police park number? Two five nine. Bernard, we've had a bomb scare. Somebody's phoned in on the police. You can let your radio people know they're not to put it out over the air. They're to keep the mouth shut. I am warning everybody just to go around and check in their own areas and whatever. Just do a quick check, and if they want to let you know everything's okay, do it by landline. Okay, cheers. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Bye. 
Hi. Bert, where are you for Christ's sake? That was the police. Yeah. They've, she's PC Humphrey. She's contacted her inspector. He's left it to me. I've told him we're not evacuated. We're carrying on. Yeah. Hello. Cheers, Mike. It is a worry. Of course, it is a worry. There's kids and families out there and whatever. But if we went to evacuate now, there'd be chaos out on that front. We'd want 50 police here to help us. Sure. And people would start to panic and run. There'd be more people killed in the rush to get out. And I don't think it's real, so. Hello, Jim Rowan. JR's seen it all before. He's had other bomb scares with no code word, and he's pretty confident it's a hoax. But it's a tough call. He's ordered radio silence and put security on full alert. I could be wrong. Of course I could. And there's a lot of people out there. And the worry is that if I've called it wrong, a lot of people will get injured. That won't be basically my fault because I didn't plant the bomb, but... I'm worried. Of course I am. But... I don't want anybody in here to see me worried now because they all think I'm calm and collected and whatever. That's what they're supposed to think. Bird's here. That'll settle your nerves, JR. What nerves? Of steel. There are nerves backstage, too. Joanne Solo is next. Double axle. show all is not lost. Joanne's costume lights up perfectly on cue. I'll give it to our pass. And that's it. The clock watching is a terrible thing to do. I don't do it very often. But I do it tonight. What's going through your mind now? <laughs> Has JR got it right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. going through mine too. Oh, yeah. Somebody has to do it, mate. And don't forget, I'm in here, but my staff's out there. As well as the public. Ah, you only got four, six of them. Mm-hmm. I've got about 1,200 of them right there. 
and about 15,000 people. seconds. system. All radios may now, may now stand down. Okay? Put that out twice. Cheers. I fell. <laughs> well, there you go. The show went on, didn't it? <laughs> I was nervous, very nervous at the beginning. But, I mean... I got through it and I did all right. I tried, I failed, but I still went on. I'm looking at it now thinking, thank God I got it right. But it's very lonely sometimes, as you saw.